Hi, continuing on our 11AX series, a very popular feature in 802.11 protocols uh, is RTS, which is used uh, or which is rather optionally used for uh, preventing hidden node based collisions. So we would like to explore how RTS is modified in the context of these multi-user transmissions which are happening um, or potentially new features in 11AX. My name is uh, Srikant and I am with NanoCell Networks. So the idea behind the new RTS mechanisms and the corresponding CTS is due to the following. And we'll take downlink as an example and then I'll go to uplink. Let's say when the AP wants to send simultaneously to these uh, four stations through an OFTMA, multi-user MIMO or a combination what happens is there could be hidden nodes which might uh, not hear the AP's transmissions, possibly closer to the stations. That could disturb the station's reception of the MUPPDU. So that's the problem context. What can the AP do in such a case to help avoid potential collisions with hidden node transmissions? The simpler idea would have been to send RTS CTS for each of these uh, stations who are involved in the MU transmissions, but that defeats the efficiency of the multi user transmissions, which is the sort of main goal of the multi user transmissions, which is captured in the high efficiency WLAN moniker for 11AX. Okay? So, how do we still solve the problem and still retain the efficiency? So, therein comes MURTS. So what is the proposal? So MURTS is a new control frame defined uh, in 11AX but remember that it needs to be audible to legacy stations which means that the duration field and as well as the fire rates used in MURTS should be decodable by our legacy stations. So that's very important. So they have to go as uh, what we call as SU transmissions okay and they need to be decodable even possibly by the 11A, 11G kind of stations okay. So MURTS is a legacy PPDU carrying duration information which can be heard by uh, anybody who is able to pass a legacy PPDU. So that announces the reservation and calls out the stations which have to respond to the CTS in whatever bandwidths and I'll come to this in more detail in the subsequent slide. But the more interesting thing is what do the stations do? The stations called out as a part of MURTS simultaneously send their CTS in the bandwidth and let's say for example in this case in the 20 megahertz bandwidth where the RTS is going on. The APS also asked the stations to send CTS in the same bandwidth. So they simultaneously send the same bits at the same fire rate. In fact, the fire rate in the standard for this is fixed at 6 megabits per second. Okay, so rate is fixed and they send exactly the same bits, which means they scrambling and everything is the same. So this way, the hope is that anybody who is near the CTS may hear one or a multi-path version of the CTS coming from another station and ergo have their NAV program so that they don't disturb this transmission which they might not hear. Okay. So that's the idea that we want to cover the medium efficiently. So we send one RTS, get multiple CTS. So MURTS is also what we call as a type of trigger because it elicits multiple people to transmit okay and the idea is that the stations are mandatorily required to carry a sense before they send the CTS and once they send the CTS AP would not know exactly who might have sent it but it would know that there is some CTS on the air and the hidden nodes hopefully will get the CTS and keep quiet okay and this is not just restricted to downlink alone it's valid for both downlink and uplink Okay, I used the downlink example which is how the standard got started on but it's valid for the uplink where AP sends MURTS let's say for example in a 20 meg bandwidth 
and the, the stations respond the same 20 meg as an example. Okay, it looks like collision, but remember the purpose of this is to just inform the nav. The RTS nav is here. The CTS nav hopefully heard by the hidden station. Even if it hears multiple such transmissions, it's fine because they're exactly the same signal. So they are like multi-path transmissions which can be decoded by an OFDM receiver um, and we deliberately pick the lowest phi rate because it's very robust to such cases. Now once the nav is booked, the trigger and the uplink transmissions can go on. Okay? Followed by of course the ACK from the AP to the multiple stations. Just continuing that example further, there are lots of flexibility in the MURTS. The MURTS can also ask stations to send their CTS on a specific 20 or 40 or 80 or 160 bandwidths. Okay, so it's not restricted to just 20 megahertz. In this case, the AP uses RTS on the 40 megahertz. It asks one station to do on the 20, another station to do on the 40. So this is all fine. If you want CTS to not collide at all, you could have asked one station to do on the primary, the another station to do on the secondary. All this is possible in the MURTS. Okay. So this might be based on what the AP wants to allocate in the subsequent trigger frames or the HEM in PQDU. So this is the way by which we survive against hidden nodes while still retaining the efficiency. So MURTS is a new frame, but it's sent in a way where even legacy stations can uh, read it. Remember, even 20 meg capable stations. So even when you are sending 40 meg RTS, you usually do what is called as non-HT duplicate. Same thing with the CTS, so that even legacy stations capable of just decoding 20 meg parts can decoded and remember you can specifically ask the CTS to come at a certain bandwidth remember CTS collision is not a big deal you don't need a special receiver they go at low rate they are treated like multi-path transmissions for decoding by the stations